guys, I am back with another voiceover and this time it's for the Traveller's Company Passport Sized Traveller's Notebook. So I'm pretty excited about this video. It's a really beautiful setup and it's taken me quite a while uh, to kind of put this. I actually thought this video would be done quite quickly and it's taken me a little while but hopefully I've covered a lot of things. And what I'm doing here is I've just pulled in two or three minutes of footage from my last video so that if you haven't seen that or you know so that all the the videos about this uh, passport size TN are in this one video so what I'm just showing you here is kind of the packaging and how nicely it comes packaged it also comes with this orange jump band so you or just this orange elastic and you can use that either as a jump band or to change out the elastic on the front if you want an orange one on the front it also comes with the dust bag so you can you know put that in there if you're worried about you know trying to keep that nice and clean which is is fair enough and or you can you know use that bag for anything but I'm just showing you here it actually doesn't come with the first notebook it comes with this blank notebook so it's a really nice quality and I haven't kind of used a paper much yet but I think we'll explore that in a couple, you know, of other videos. So I am just, I think I'm going to just show you here how um, nicely that fits. If you just like a slim profile, then that is going to be a really good setup for you. And you can just use the one blank or, you know, you can get different inserts to change that out so the whole point of these um, travels notebooks is it so that you can customize and personalize these you know leather covers or other covers for you know what works for you so it's really really nice in that way that your travels notebook is going to be unique to you to your likes and to your needs and you can see here so we're going to just start with this really slim profile and the one insert and then I'm going to show you how you can sort of build on that and by the end of the video we have a really chunky notebook and I really love it. So here I just took the elastic out of the front cover and so sorry that was from my last video and took the elastic out and I'm just gonna sandwich these two notebooks together so in my last um, video I said two elastics but I'm gonna sandwich these two notebooks together with that one jump band that was on the packaging and then I'm just gonna pop that in the elastic there and so this is basic the basic kind of thing that I still have even at the end of the video I've just added some layers of lace and some other papers but I still have just those two inserts and then in the middle of those on the middle elastic I've popped a we're going to make a folder so here I'm just kind of showing you I actually bought these classic-y like they're kind of library card style waxed um, envelopes and I wanted to put that in the front cover and just kind of keep some of my things that I'm like working on in there but it was actually too big so I don't mind because I really love the they're actually really nice I think I'm pretty sure I got them from Paper Plus Cloth on Etsy. And I actually got these fishtail clips from there as well. They're, they're from Tools to Live By. They're really nice. Uh, they're not very sturdy, but they're just really aesthetic. And then I also got the Delft tape from that shop as well. So here I'm just going to show you these tiny little pearls. And I got them from Michael's. They were just a few dollars and I really love them. I'm not sure if they're for like to make earrings out of them or something, but I just knotted one straight onto the um, bookmark that is there. That They give you a leather bookmark in the um, notebook. And I just knotted that straight on. I really, really love that ele element. And then here I'm just kind of showing you a few things and then here we're going to get into for the front of the notebook I'm trying to think of you know I've been trying to think of what how I want that to look and so I am going to try and crochet a doily from this DMC number five and I think I showed it there the number I think it was seven I can't remember but you'll see it in the video and so it's the thinner of the two 
and I'm just going to try and, um, and I just got that from Michael's and I am going to get a sort of picker crochet hook now that will just fit that um, cotton perfectly. So I'm just showing you here that I really love those rosewood ones that you can get at Michael's as well. And if you've never crocheted before, I'm going to, I'll, I'll link the video below the one that I used for the doily that I did on the front. She's, she's really, really good. She shows you everything. And um, I actually learned crochet a few years ago just off YouTube. And basically I watched videos for probably a couple of weeks. It would have been a couple of weeks before I even decided to sort of get a crochet hook and get some like you know embroidery floss and actually try my hand at it so that's one thing when you're kind of learning something you know um, take your time look into it and learn about it you don't have to pick up a crochet hook and start it straight away so like if you're looking at this and you're thinking you know I've never done this before how am I going to kind of figure this all out it's a it's a learning curve you know take it one step at a time and the first step is just to simply look and see you know what people are doing and how they can how the kind of how it works you know and I learned a lot just from watching that and then you know then you can kind of pick up for example like when you're learning a language you know you listen to the language first before you try and say it you don't just sort of read the word off the paper and try and say it so um, it's the same principle here and I'm just showing you I love these ginger scissors these um, they're spring actions so they're really easy to cut but you've got to sort of keep the um, they don't sit closed they sit open so you've got to um, keep that gold part closed and then here I'm just kind of trying to remember sort of some stitches so it, it's been a while I am pretty rusty I actually have quite a few journals with crochet in them or on the cover and I might do like a whole nother video just about that at some point but I really do enjoy it and I'm just sort of trying to um, remember how to do how to do it now basically and kind of try and follow her tutorial a little bit here and just kind of give you a uh, sort of some tiny snippets of what that's like and it's it's really easy so I'll send you over to her video you know I'm not going to show you the whole tutorial on it here but just so you can kind of see that coming to life and so that is the last stitch right there and then I'm just sort of put cutting that off and pulling that through and I always like to kind of hide the um the excess a little bit of the excess just you know um knit that back through the kind of edge of the stitching or something like that so I'm just kind of doing that a little bit of that now and one of the things when I was doing this, I kind of picked this and I thought for some reason it would be a little bit bigger. It probably would have been bigger if I had of, you know, used a thicker like wool or something like that. But um, I kind of wanted it to wrap around the, the way I envisioned it was that it would kind of wrap like a third of it would be behind the sort of journal and then, you know, two thirds of it would be over the front. And then it was just this really small kind of floral shape and so I'm like okay I don't know if this is going to work I might need to do something else but it actually has worked out really nicely and the funny thing was even while I was crocheting it um, she tells you to do sort of 11 double crochets or or whatever I can't remember but um, to do 11 of them and as I was doing it I'm thinking I could probably stop at eight I think 11 is gonna you know be quite quite a lot and then it's actually given it a really nice frill so when it's on the kind of I, I end up just threading it through and it's just kind of frilling in a really nice way and it's actually exactly what I wanted and it just gives enough of a sort of decoration so here I'm kind of trying to play around with the placement of it like should I make it bigger and should I you know wrap it but I end up just leaving it and then here I'm just showing you the next thing that I do to the front is I get this Dr. P.H. Martin's 1R Silver and 
and then I get my dip pen and basically I'm going to create the my little shape that I kind of use the kind of I, I I think of it as like on the old stone doors like those those really nice carvings and so that's kind of what I what I take that from and basically I'm just using the end of the crochet hook and going around the outside and kind of embossing or debossing a little bit into the leather and then I'm just going to use a dip pen and go straight over the top of that and I just kind of show you here I tested out the ink on the back so I was really happy with it it is a permanent ink so it's not going to go anywhere and I have seen people stamp with stays on ink and I was thinking about getting the silver silver stays on ink and I'll also link that below but I ended up going with this it's kind of my favorite thing and then I could actually you know put exactly the image that I wanted on the front I didn't just have to go with a stamp and one of the things while I was doing it you always get really nervous when something's permanent and you can't kind of change it but I ended up being pretty happy with the result like not a hundred percent but pretty happy and you know it's always kind of like that just you know oh yeah that'll that, that that's kind of you know 80 percent yep good so anyway um I am definitely not a perfectionist but I'm just kind of showing you here the end result and really enjoying that and I just love all the little sort of elements that are popping out the corners of the notebook as well like the little bits of lace and the bits of glitter at this point I am pretty happy with the way that everything's working out and I am kind of still trying to figure out what I'm going to do with this on the front and that kind of takes me a, a, a few minutes to kind of figure out you know how I want to work this do I want to keep keep um, growing that crochet and just adding some more layers but I've, I end up just threading it through and what was I going to say about that so at this point I kind of felt like okay I am about you know 60% done and I can sort of do a flip through and upload the video and then I'm like okay that didn't work so I, I am pretty much now you know 80 to 90 percent finished and I'm pretty happy with it by the end of the video but I just kept working and working through things on video with you and adding layers and things so this is kind of the start of a flip through but this is not actually how it kind of ends up being you know I add quite a few extra elements by the end and then here I'm just showing you in that front pocket I have um, a white tea stationery card which I really love a business card and then here I've actually just cut up some Daniel Smith so they're, they're the watercolor dots and I will also link these below but these are like I'm, I'm just showing you the sparkle in them and I really really love the, um, all those colors so I just have those sort of popped in there and if I want to watercolor with them I can but I just really do like them for kind of inspiration and things like that the watercolor is actually still you know usable like I can sort of re-wet it and it will um, just reactivate so here I'm just showing you that I have some silk organza on that side and behind the silk organza okay so let's just backtrack for a second this is the Southworth paper from Walmart that I've used for that um, business card holder and then here I'm showing you the so this is the Emily Bell uh, print and she's got temporary tattoos and so I've cut around the temporary tattoo and put it behind this silk organza and I'm just showing you here I've put it on a palette this is actually we're going to do a nib video and like a dip pen video so I'm just prepping for that but and then I've put the temporary tattoo on these Tim Holtz. So they're actually sticker like glitter. And I'm just showing you kind of the fineness of it there compared to like the, um, some glitter pages from Walmart. But I really, really love it, um, the Tim Holtz one. So here I'm just showing you that I've got one of those classic -y envelopes in there put onto actually a Tim Holtz. It's a little... Uh, vintage 
some kind of, I can't remember what it was called, but I will try and link everything below. And I really love that as well, though, those little um, Tim Holtz elements. So here I'm just showing you in the, this is a Muji gridded insert that I showed you at the beginning. So you can see I just have that same insert and then I have put the Tim Holtz glitter kind of silver glitter adhesive and then I've put the silk organza around that as well and then here I have just put a couple of my favorite little vellum um, pieces so they're out of this clear print vellum book and it was just a few dollars on Amazon and I really love using those for things I'm working on I can kind of um, lay it like I can trace them and then I can sort of take out parts I don't want and things like that so I can kind of look at it here I'm just showing you that the the the, the silver glitter was a little bit short and it actually worked out really well because I had to find some way to kind of lengthen it and I used these pieces of embossed white floral uh, cardstock and I just tore the edges to make that really nice sort of edge and the soft edge and then I've just clipped that all together um, with a clip there and so here I'm just basically showing you that is the last blank insert and I actually took the the sort of maroon cover off it I just pulled that off and I put like a trellis like a white trellis piece of cardstock on that and so then here I'm kind of trying to show you um, I'm jumping back and forth here but here I'm trying to show you that I we're going to make a folder now that goes on the middle elastic just with this um, paper and so this is something that I found last year it's in my you know last year's favorite art supplies video and I'm trying to show you the colors here and I just pulled a brown one out I think it's called fawn and it's exactly the right size so it's five by seven you fold it in half and it's perfect in these inserts so that's another thing if you're trying to make inserts you just look for five by seven paper and then you can fold it straight in half and you have your inserts so but what I want to do is to create a pocket and I've thought about um so you can see there I just slipped it out of the middle elastic and I'm trying to show you here that those two inserts are just it's still the same two inserts so basically what we're going to do now is take this cry cut paper cutter and I just got this from Walmart as well actually and I'm just sort of trimming off the top of the paper there so this is a recollections paper so it's Michael's own brand and I really really love this I've been hoarding it for quite a while but I, I thought it really matched with the um kind of uh, I like the I'm kind of trying to go for a powder blue and kind of dove gray and then you know the color of the um the embroidery f thread for the doily on the front cover is sort of that color and so I'm just trying to pick up on that in a lot of different ways through the journal and that kind of it's the same sort of similar color to the um, silk organza that I used in the front so here what I'm doing is I'm actually cutting the paper just a little bit um, you'll see here in a minute but it's a little bit I've just kind of eyeballed it and then made it wider on each side on the three sides than the actual you know part that's going to be the base of the folder and I'm just doing that so that we can crease those and make pockets that sit up from the side so we're not actually gluing straight onto that I'm not sure if that makes sense but it's kind of like an accordion pocket without the extra fold but there's at least one fold there to make it nice and you know give you that whole sort of the whole length of the sorry the whole width of the um you know sleeve there you can kind of use that to Hopefully that'll make sense in a minute. So I'm just kind of showing you how I'm just uh, trimming off those those edges there in those kind of triangle shapes so that that, that is, sits really nicely and it doesn't sort of bulk up. And then here I'm just um, 
creasing it the the back you know backwards so that it will fit in so hopefully there you can see so I am trying to show you the shape here that it's going to be like a secretarial pocket and then I've kind of penciled a bit of a line in that I want to follow but then I actually yeah end up doing the curve a little bit wider than that then I just kind of do it how it feels right when I cut it so that's just kind of how I did it and um, what I was kind of trying to show you before which I actually sort of forgot to mention is that I did kind of try and line up the middle crease there with the middle of a damask so that the pattern actually sat quite nicely on the um, on the paper there if that makes sense and here I'm just going to go over the edges with a little bit of roller tape and this one actually doesn't stick very well so I was just kind of trying to get it to the edges and just get it good enough so that I could you know finish filming at this point and I'll kind of um, add in you know some proper glue later but here I am just going to show you now how that looks in the um, TN and I really really love how this turned out and then I'm just going to show you here how the paper can kind of fit in there hopefully that makes sense now that we haven't taken up any of the sort of width of the paper with glue it's all on that back flap of the you know of the top of the sort of pocket that we put in and here I am just actually unboxing one of these so I have seen these little sort of fairies Christmas fairies or um, you know paper ornament fairies on Pinterest for a few years now and I've really loved them and then I actually found them at Barnes and Noble this year so I was so excited they're from somewhere in Europe and her name is I'm not sure how you pronounce it but I think it's Jeet Froelich or something like that I will link them below and I have put them on my blog before but I really love them and they were like $20 a box on Barnes and, in Barnes and & Noble and so I didn't get them before Christmas and then they went on sale um, for $4.95 after Christmas so I was super excited about that and I really really love them they're actually like unboxing little dolls <laughs> they're really really nice the way they're packaged and everything like that so I thought it would be nice to have like a little wish fairy in my journal and um, here I'm just actually showing you through so this is my little pile of fabrics and I used to collect fabric sort of um, remnants all the time in Australia I had three fabric shops that I really love to go to in Brisbane and I feel really spoiled now like we're in New York and um, a lot of the fabric shops here are um, well there's a lot of you know New York Fashion Week so you have a lot of students looking for cheaper fabrics and um, those are all really beautiful at European silks and so I really love them there's a couple of like t-shirts and things as well that I wanted to use like really nice brush cotton and things but anyway I'm just looking for oh, we're doing another little project now and I will tell you about it but here I just wanted to show you that if you need to use so you know the embroidery floss sorry embroidery floss that you can get at um you know michael's or, or walmart or anywhere if you just need to use one little strand of that as like a piece of cotton that's a really good somebody showed me that in a um in an embroidery shop you just cut it to the size you want you pull one of those um, little threads and then you just pull that and it, and it comes out without tangling the whole thread you know sometimes you're trying to take it apart and like it all gets knotted but that's a really easy way you just pull it straight up and then the whole rest of the thread goes back to normal so basically the little project we're doing here at the minute is a little silk cloud and we're going to put like lavender and rose potpourri in it so I saw these um somebody I'm, I'll see if I can find remember where I found them and link it below and somebody was making like lavender sleep masks with silk 
and then lavender inside it. And I just, I, can't, I couldn't stop thinking about them. They were really pretty. And I'm pretty sure she used silk organza so you could kind of see like the rose petals and the lavender through it. And I just really loved that quality of the kind of see-through nature of it. And then the, I'm sure the smell of it would be really nice. So what I've decided to do is make a little silk cloud and put um, sort of some lavender and rose petals in here. So I got some from my local organic fruit shop. And I'm actually just kind of showing you here. And so I've kind of just hand stitched like very, very sort of, you know, not very um, elegantly around the edges. And I'm just going to leave the raw edges um, out like that. I'm not even going to turn it inside out. I'm just going to leave it like that and then put the potpourri in there. And I actually end up switching the so I think the cloud is backwards here so I end up switching it around at the end but I really really enjoyed that element and just enjoyed making it and again here like I'm like oh yep yeah, I'm pretty much done and great I can sort of finish the flip through but they keep they keeps being a few more I'm like no this really needs to be you know done more just you know finished nicely so I think at this point I basically take some time off camera and finish a couple of things that I really think need just a little bit more work on um, I have really enjoyed seeing a couple of junk journal um, insert sort of flip throughs and um, I was thinking about putting this silk in and then I found a video and I'll try and find it and link it below and she actually had a silk pouch in her travels notebook and I'm like yes okay I'm not alone in this so I was really excited um, to see that and so here I think I am just starting the actual flip through and I'm just showing you how chunky this thing has gotten and I am absolutely loving all of these little uh, bits of glitter and bits of lace and all the really nice sort of rough edges and the soft edges peeking out of the sides of the tan. So here we're just going to open up and just dive right in here. And it's pretty similar at this point. So I think I added a few bits of illustration and some kind of dip pen here with some inks. And I did a little bit of kind of a pencil stamp there. So I'm still really enjoying that. And I'm loving, I'm loving that. What I want to actually do with that is put it onto a bit of vinyl at some point. Or sorry, like a bit of um, acetate. But for now, it's just going to stay there. And then I've used these from Walmart again. So these are just alphabet stickers and they're kind of foam and I just really love the glitter on them actually so the silver is really really pretty and the sheet is really long as well so it's a really nice you get a really nice amount of stickers there and here I actually just cut up a piece of leather so this is like my favorite ostrich print um, white leather and I just got that off Amazon and I'll link that below and then a couple of labels like pearl white labels and then this was actually from our Christmas tree, just one of the um, leaves, which I really love, this sort of champagne gold. And then here, I've just stapled on one of, a, a, just a little fabric scrap of my favorite colored sort of silk there. And again, we've got the, um, I really love this little chunk of paper here. It's just, it's a really nice um, sort of texture. And then we have the back of it, which I really love. And I'm, I'm also thinking of um, pinning a few things on there. And again, we have that beautiful little wish fairy. I mean, the exciting thing about this book is that every element in there is my favorite. So I really, really love it. Um, so here at, on the back of that uh, folder I just actually made a page of washi so that I can use that if I need to or at least it's there and I am just showing you 
I kind of added a little, I think it's a Tim Holtz label as well, and some little scraps of fabric. And here you can see the cloud actually when I flipped it around, so the right way, the way it should be. And it's really, it's a really nice little pretty thing in there that I love as well. And so again with the pearl on the bookmark and then this page, I didn't do much to it. So I used a little bit of this um, Robert Oster Rose Gilt Tint. I really love this. It's, it's actually made in Australia and it says Australian Colours for the World's Artists to Enjoy. And you can see at the bottom there, there's a little bit of the shimmer and you kind of have to shake that up to activate it. But it's just, it, it sort of goes like part of its, uh, I don't know, oyster colours. It's really pretty. And then here I'm just showing you kind of the lank insert. And then at the back there, I did like a little template of the cloud. So I have kind of have that if I need, you know, if I want to make another one or something like that. And then... This is basically the end of this flip through. I think um, what I just realized is that I didn't actually take it fully apart. So at some point I will just do like a really small, you know, quick kind of five minute flip through and I'll actually just pull the whole thing apart and then kind of reconstruct it all so you can see exactly, you know, how I've layered everything and how that works. I mean, hopefully you can kind of tell from what we've done, but... I'll, I'll just do another video where I just completely, you know, um, start that from scratch. And what was the other thing? And I have been actually adding a few things here and there since I kind of did this video. So I might wait a couple of weeks and just kind of see it come to sort of exactly how I want it. And then, you know, before I do kind of a final, just a really quick um, deconstruction and flip you through for you. But I hope you enjoyed this and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.